Gennady. Uh, how's he doing? Uh, what can we expect this year from him? And just give us an update. You told me Gennady Golovkin was your favorite fighter. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah. Um, well, we're getting ready to, uh, you know, Monte Carlo is going to be uh, February 21st. It's going to be on HBO over here in the States uh, against Martin Murray, who's uh, top Sergio Martinez in Argentina. Really one of the best. He's rated number one in the WC, one of the best middleweights out there. So it's going to be a big test for Gennady. Uh, the same thing with Gennady. I don't think anyone's on Gennady's level in the middleweight division. So we're looking forward to another strong performance and, and uh, uh, just building this global brand. Last one for uh, Andre Ward, just out of Rock Nation. I spoke to him in Vegas. Wants Gennady, thinks that he you know, needs to come up and fight him. Is that more possible now? What are your thoughts on that one? Certainly more possible now that they've settled the uh, he's moved past you know, the litigation that he had with uh, the uh, you know, Rock Nation seems to bring a lot of energy. It's a sport of boxing, a lot of marketing. And the bigger they can make Andre, the bigger that fight can make. And we've always said that you know, he would fight at 168. It's just economics are never really there uh, as a favorable fight. But with Gennady increasing his profile and, and Andre gets back on track and, and uh, you know, he certainly has some great wins and 168 pounds pretty much cleared out the whole division. So uh, he gets back on track and I think, I mean, I think that could be a, that could be a big fight. Can't wait, Tom. You got a figure ahead of you. Good luck. Can't wait to see you again, man. Thanks, guys. With Canelo and Cotto being off, is there a chance Gennady might push for a Canelo fight? <laughs> Gennady push for anyone to get in the ring with them. Uh, definitely uh, against Canelo. I think Canelo will fight Gennady, unlike a lot of fighters, but not at, not in May, but maybe by the end of the year or next year, definitely. That would be a great fight. Thank you. You see you guys hyping a fight, but then it turns into a boring fight or a 12-round decision. Gennady's had 18 knockouts in a row right now. And he understands, you know, Abel's instilled into him that it's an entertainment business, and he's got you know, to take risks to provide the knockouts or the excitement in the ring, and that's what I think is... Uh, really unique with him is that combination and him being able to to provide the excitement in the ring but then turn off the switch and being you know really uh, humble and likable outside the ring that's why he's got so many fans because they really really like to support him yeah he is the dr jekyll and mr hyde in the ring um do you think do you agree with a lot of fans that say that he may be avoided avoided by like the kodos and fighters like that uh, no question i mean when i when i, when I go down the list up and down the list with hbo and you know who would be possible and who's not possible it always seems to be you know, we fight him but just not next so that's what we're going to make a shirt you know triple g just not next so people don't want to say they don't want to fight him but it's just hard to get him in the ring at that particular time and do you think there's a chance that he'll he'll be faced with the decision to have to move up to fight the guys like Andre Ward or Kovalev, somebody bigger, Cole Watch? There's, there's certainly a lot of great names at 168. It's just uh, he's got so many uh, guys left at 160. Um, that, that would be the priorities to, to unify the titles. If there's a big fight that comes up at 168, he has no hesitation of moving up or even moving down. I mean, he's a small middleweight. So he would move down as well. Okay, and last question. What do you think of Peter Quillen vacating his title? You know, I, supposedly there was some you know, personal issues that he had there, so it's hard for me to comment on that. I just know, uh, you know, when you're a champion, you give it the title. It doesn't look good, you know, on the surface. We have a, I have a good relationship with, with, with Quillen, and, uh, you know, we have respect for him. And we were looking and trying to make that fight before. Um, I hear that maybe he's going to fight Andy Lee coming up, so if he can win his title back, you know, it's a great fight. I mean, we always thought it would be a great unification fight for United. All right, I want to thank you for your time. Do you guys have faith that a fight with Vlad and Wilder can happen later this year? Oh, I think so. I, well, I don't know about this year, but I think definitely you'll see a unification fight there. I mean, you know, Vladimir's established himself as the best, and I think uh, Wilder, you know, he's he won the title, and they put on a great show, and he's a marketable guy. Another exciting, you know, tall heavyweight, bring a lot of excitement to the division. So I think that that's that'll be a huge fight. Can Probably, I get yeah. your opinion on what Shannon Briggs has been doing with Vladimir Klitschko? <laughs> Shannon Briggs has been trying to get a fight. Is there any chance of that happening at all? It's hard to say. It's really hard to say. I mean, between Vladimir with all his titles and mandatories and everything like that, I mean, Shannon's been doing everything he can to uh, try to get that fight, get under Vladimir's skin. But you know, Vladimir's a professional, and he, you know, he kind of takes it with a grain of salt, but. You know, I mean, Briggs is a, he's a marketable guy, he's a self-promoter, you know, he's definitely out there, he's well-known, it just, uh, I don't know how realistic that fight is, uh, you know, at this, this particular time. Thank you.
this is Oscar De La Hoya and you're watching HoopJab.com.